Hello, this is James from xrobots.co.uk. Today I'm going to be talking about another robotics project. This is going to be a mobile uh, robotics navigation project, and for that I'm going to be using the 914 PC Bot from Whitebox Robotics. I've owned my 914 PC Bot for a number of years. It's made by a Canadian company, Whitebox Robotics, who are a subsidiary of Frontline Robotics, who make um, military grade robots for defence and so on. You can check out the website, which is whiteboxrobotics.com or Frontline Robotics if you Google that. This is essentially a PC bot, which means that it's a PC based robot. Um, you may notice on the front it has various uh, familiar looking bays, which are actually five and a quarter inch drive bays as used in PCs. It also has four drive bays at the back. One of those will have a disc caddy in. So let's uh, take the plastics off and we'll have a look. So we've got a webcam in the eye there, the lid comes off there. Normally um, in the production model this piece of plastic on the inside is fixed to the base and the lid lifts off without it. I fixed mine into the lid because at one point I had a modification that made the head rise up. So let's just pull those wires out. That's just a USB webcam. So the idea is you can upgrade this with parts from the PC shop. And let's just take the front and back covers off. All right, so we've got um, a special five and a quarter inch piece here, which is um, a sensor. It's basically got three sharp infrared sensors inside and those point down to look for drops so it won't fall downstairs and so on. Um, also another three of these sensors in the bottom skirt and there are, sorry there's five in total, there's another two at the sides and there's also uh, blanking points and mounting brackets to add more. If we undo these, we've got these wings which fold down This one contains two power supplies, which are the M2 ATX DC to DC power supplies. Um, those are the sort of things that you'd have um, in a car, for instance, to power a computer. So they take um, a variety of input voltages and they produce clean power to power a PC. So you've got 5 and 12 volt rails and so on. <coughs> There's a lot of wiring. Um, on the other side, we have a bay there which contains the mini ITX board. So that's a standard mini ITX board. The, uh, all the normal ports are here, that's the hard disk cable. We have the power connector that connects onto here. This is actually, the board I have in here is um, a few years old now. It's a VIA C7 core, which isn't actually up to much. Obviously you can upgrade this with whatever you want. You can put twin Intel processors in or anything you like. Um, I can't afford to replace the board right now, so I'm going to be using a netbook to um, control the robot. But sometime in the future, you could put any uh, PC in there you like practically, with any ports or slots on, and you can put normal PC RAM in, of course, and anything you'd like. So there's the back of the Mini ITX cage, which you can see the standard ports there, USB and so on. The uh, controller itself for the robot is a USB device. Um, basically I've got a longer cable there so I can put my netbook on the top, which is what I'll actually be using. So the robot itself is a USB device. If we undo the screws at the sides here and we take off the skirt, if you'll excuse the very long USB cable, and what we can see is the actual M3 controller, which is the controller that the robot uses to control its wheels and sensors and so on. So as I say, the M3 controller is um, a USB device. It's got a USB type B connector on it. Um, we've got 12 volt power in from the batteries in the base. And we've got the two motor connectors, left and right. And we've got another IO board. So the uh, M3 controller uses two PMD Corp 3410 industrial stepper motor controllers. So the whole thing is built to quite a high standard. The robot is mostly made of steel. In fact, I think it's all steel construction. And it was actually made in a factory in Canada, which generally makes medical grade equipment. 
So looking at the base of the robot, we can see the two main drive wheels. Those are driven by two stepper motors controlled by the M3 board. We also have two of these ball casters at the back and front. Uh, the one there, which is actually the front, is on a suspension arm so that it can go over lumps and bumps without getting grounded. Here's a quick view just um, through the drive bays in the back. So I've got a drive caddy here which doesn't have the disc in at the moment. You can just about see a fan in the bottom and you can see the devices which are mounted in the front. So as well as the sensors, I have a set of five and a quarter inch speakers and also have this display which is one of the alpha cool displays <coughs> which you can make up your own graphics to display on there and that's a USB device. So obviously all those USB devices can plug into the onboard computer so you can just use literally normal PC peripherals from PC World or wherever. I've also got the power switches there for the um, M3 controller and the main power to the wheels. Just hear the fan start up there, it's on a five second delay. We've also got the PC reset and the PC power. So I've actually disconnected the motherboard at the moment and that's because I'm going to be using my higher powered netbook um, for development in the short term. So as I mentioned, the robot has the sharp infrared sensors on, which are basically proximity sensors. They're not too bad, um, although they're fairly hit and miss um, on certain surfaces where something's reflective, like if it drives near a mirror or it drives near um, a big glass window and so on. Ideally, you want to mix um, ultrasonic sensors and infrared sensors together, or use something like an industrial laser scanner. Um, since the robot was manufactured, basically in the last few years, uh, Microsoft have of course released the Kinect, which has been used in a lot of mobile robotics applications. It is still infrared, so it still relies on reflection, um, but it basically is an infrared projector that projects a big um, infrared pattern and then it judges depth based on that. So these are pretty cheap. A laser scanner is about £2,000. This, this white limited edition Kinect uh, was only £62 second hand on eBay. So I'm going to be using that as the main sensor for the project. As I mentioned, I'm also going to be using my netbook as the onboard computer um, until such time that I upgrade the mini ITX board. So I've got my M3 controllers just plugged in with USB and that works fine. This is running Windows 7. There's also um, software support for the 914 PC bot for um, Linux projects such as the Player Stage project, various other bits of software. So I'm not the best software developer in the world, in fact I'm probably one of the worst. I've dabbled with C-sharp.net and a bit of Python. Um, there are basically algorithms out there, SLAM algorithms, which stands for Simultaneous Localization and Mapping, uh, which basically takes the wheel positions from the robot and it takes um, sensor data and it collates them to build up a map of the surroundings, um, constantly relocating where the robot thinks it is and navigating at the same time. So there are algorithms in various robotic frameworks such as ROS, Microsoft Robotics Studio and also in Player Stage Project that already do that. Um, I quite like to write some stuff from scratch because I also want to learn something as I go along and also become a better software developer. So um, I'm going to take a different approach to that and it's best explained by looking at one of my other robots. So this is Android 11 which was my 11th attempt at making a bipedal a uh, humanoid android, it effectively walks along on two legs and it just about works. Um, I cheated um, when I built this, so it's using radio control style servos to control the limb positions. Um, and the whole robot is controlled with a single Pickaxe 18X, which is a very basic microcontroller. Um, generally, in order to make something like this dynamically stable, you need to read sensors like gyros and accelerometers. This robot actually has five of those sensors. Um, and then you need to do quite a lot of maths to work out, you know, in real time how the robot's moving and adjust its movements so it stays balancing. But I cheated with this one. So what I've actually got are gyros which are radio control heading gyros, which are wired in line with the servos as they would normally be in a radio controlled helicopter. And that means that I can drive the servos to fixed positions on fixed timers, and then the motion of the robot changes a signal that comes out of the gyros, and that modifies the servo position. So it's effectively a two-layer approach, which means I've got one layer telling the uh, robot where I want it to go, and then the sensors compensate, and they say, no, don't go to that position because you're about to fall over, do something else. So it's very easy to control and I didn't have to do any heavy lifting in terms of maths or calculations 
um, because the robot just basically takes care of it itself. If you want to see Android 11 or any of my other robots in action, there is a YouTube playlist in my channel called uh, Robotics or something. And there's a build blog on the website for Android 11 and two testing videos has also been featured on Hackaday and a number of other blogs. So my approach for doing a very similar thing for this robot um, is basically the uh, wheels are driven by stepper motors, as I mentioned, which means we can count the steps of the motors to work out where it is um, and we can make it rotate and drive specific distances. Um, so with a SLAM algorithm, generally you'd read the sensor data and you've modified the position simultaneously uh, based on the sensor data and, the, and where it's seeing obstacles and so on. I'm going to do a two-layered approach where I'm going to use dead reckoning, so that means just driving the wheels forward and hoping it gets to where it's supposed to go, and then I'm going to have another layer which is basically reading the connect data and I'm going to use as much off-the-shelf software as I can. I'm not going to be doing vision processing algorithms from scratch. So I'm going to be using a piece of software called RoboRealm, which is, I believe, $50 to buy for personal use. And it supports Connect. You can get the depth map from it. The um, Connect is also a webcam for colour pictures. RoboRealm will interface with all sorts of cameras and hardware. And um, that will allow you to basically do all sorts of vision processing algorithms which are already written into RoboRealm. It's also got API support so you can interface with your own software. So the plan is to use dead reckoning in the first instance and then build another software layer that reads the connect data and um, basically modifies the position. So it makes control in the same way as Android 11 very easy that you can tell it to go to a specific position and then there's another software layer using the Connect, which uh, basically compensates what you've said and doesn't let it run into obstacles or make it go round obstacles and also check that you've actually got to where you want to go. So it's not exactly simultaneous localization and mapping. It's um, basically almost like an error checking layer, which um, stops the robot running down the stairs and into walls. One thing I want to stress is that this is an experimental project, like most of the things in my YouTube channel and on my website. So there are obviously off-the-shelf algorithms already for doing simultaneous localization and mapping, but I'm going to be doing this in an experimental way to see if it works. Next time I'll be messing around with the Kinect and with RoboRealm to see how much of the processing we can get RoboRealm to do, basically to try and draw up a map of areas the robot can go and areas it can't go, so watch out for the next update.